Hello again, Star Wars. Hello, Star Hello, Wars Star Wars fans. Uh, how is everybody doing this uh, evening, uh, Jerry? Uh, if you haven't noticed, we are joined by not one but two guests. Uh, first I, I one, what? I think you go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, <laughs> I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about our our fans, our watchers, people who have joined okay. us every Wednesday night because they want to see your smiling, beautiful face. They sure do. Yeah. Um, but no, we have tonight uh, Matt and Kendall. Uh, these are the two guys who do the weekly Bad Deck Breakdowns. Uh, or they do the ba- Bad Deck ba- Breakdown. Say that five times fast. Uh, podcast. <laughs> the Bad Deck Breakdown Podcast. We record <laughs> monthly and don't, don't be afraid to play Bad Decks. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Well, That's thank all, you guys for making time. Play. To be with us this week, we definitely appreciate having mm-hmm. you on. Uh, I know uh, you guys have been hard at work on your little uh, podcast for a while, and yeah. uh, it's cool that uh, I, I've definitely listened to a few of them. And then also, Kendall was doing a bunch of of podcasting for the MPC too. So mm-hmm. I've been I've been definitely paying attention to to a lot of that stuff. So thank you guys for volunteering to keep that uh, going, and uh, glad you guys could join us tonight. How y'all yeah. doing? Uh, doing, doing, doing great. I, I, lot, doing lots of podcasting. I, I do lots of podcasts that are not Star Wars as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll definitely talk to you a little bit about that as well. Well, so, uh, I mean, this, this is a Star Wars show, so yeah, no, 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 no. yeah loosely, <laughs> loosely. Yeah, that's me how I am, and that's just you know, podcasting is my life. So. That's fair. I'm glad. <laughs> uh, and then, how are you doing out there, the only Matt? Thing going right in my life, you know. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm doing good. Glad to be here. It's been a whole lot of stuff uh, going on in my house the last hour to get all the kiddos to bed and bathed and <laughs> yada yada yada. Well, yeah, so. thanks for thanks for putting up yes. with that and making time for us <laughs> and making time for all the fans of the show. So um, yeah, basically, let's sort of get into to how you guys sort of got started with with your bad break. Bad deck breakdowns. You're right. It's hard to say. <laughs> um, I know. Obviously, I'm, I'm guessing Kendall was sort of the uh, the guy who who got it started since he was he, he comes from a podcasting background. Uh, maybe Kendall, just sort of give us the the background of how you kind of got started and what made you want to do this sort of thing. Okay, so it all started back in 2012 uh, when I I did a podcast called Kitchen Finks about magic cards, and then I got okay. into Star Wars okay. and realized there were no star wars podcast so i did uh the bunta eve podcast with uh seth akri for okay. Okay. A, a little while and then like you know i ended up it, it you know petered off like podcasts do uh when i got back into the game uh i there was a lot more like content you guys and gogolin were were doing your stuff uh but still no still no traditional like Apple podcast downloadable audio like audio podcast. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Right. If I was, when I'm driving to work, I'm, I'm too old to do Twitch. You know, <laughs> uh, hey, Corin, your mic's a little, little, uh, uh low. Uh, if you could just it's increase low? the volume. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad <laughs> to see that you actually have a normal mic, like a normal studio mic there. Yeah. My uh, like TV video background is like geeking out over it. <laughs> yep, it's a, it's a fifty. It's a fifty-eight, uh, a sure fifty-eight uh, that I used from when I was in a band. The best way to start a podcast is to have all of the sound equipment when your band breaks up, <laughs> and, then, and then you can you can do there you lots go. of cool stuff. Uh, but so I went to Continentals and recorded an audio. Uh, who's a what's it? An audio turn report. report. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and got a lot of a lot of positive uh, responses from that. Mm-hmm. So uh, I reached out to Dorsch and Nate said, hey. back. <laughs> "Yes, yes." And I said, "Hey, uh, you know, you helped me. You helped me with my decks before Continentals, and because I had sent him, I had sent him the list that I've been working on, mm-hmm. and he gave me some really good feedback. And uh, and he sent me a a private message back. He said, "I think you need a partner who is good at the game." But it does sound like a good idea. <laughs> that does sound like something Dorsch would say. Yeah, and, uh, he's uh, he, he would also say thanks. Yes, he did end up. He did end his end his uh, message with thanks. Uh, yeah. yeah. Also, Dorsch, Dorsch and I go way back because uh, he's the only person I ever played uh, Hollow Table with. 
Or, okay. Or yeah, yeah. Uh, because I was too scared to play against random people, and so I made him get a Skype account, <laughs> and we would do a Skype call and then play, and which made it a lot less daunting. But yeah, okay. then I reached out to CRG uh, because uh, one of the things that I said was in, in my in my tournament report was that more people need to play. Uh, and I say this tongue in cheek, bad decks, meaning not literally decks that are bad, but just like, I, I feel like sometimes in the Star Wars CCG community, especially in the past, it's actually not as bad as it used to be. But there are a lot of people who are very much like you, if you are not one of the top five players in the world, you need to be copying the top five players in the world's decks. And, right. you, know, you know, especially and, and, and that's not how I play card games i mean the whole point for me is a lot of the point of it is building the decks and, mm -hmm. and uh and so i kind of put out a call and i said people need to play bad decks and crg posted a bunch of a bunch of bad decks on the forums and so uh <laughs> That's reached right. out to him and, yep. and uh and and then and then the rest is history right awesome. yeah those are some those are some the i think that was my uh it's like a profit blasters ping aim high shenanigan it was a, a map capture that started all wrapped up <laughs> well okay so i'm gonna say this like the the profit deck with the blaster pings and everything that sounds like a johnny chu type of deck too you know i that's the original like deck list that i kind of came in on because i mm -hmm. got back into the game in late 2017 like right after minnesota worlds and so i'm really bummed i missed that yeah. And so um, I kind of gravitated toward the, the Chew Profit, but that bad deck I think I posted was, it started aim high uh, instead of Saitor. Uh, to get the double, uh, when you shoot twice, you get the power bonus yeah. or whatever. Right, so it had a whole bunch of goofball things in there, like Chopper and Captain <sighs> Utani and uh, Rex. So, I mean, every permanent weapon guy you can think of, plus Hobby. Luke's yeah. Blaster, yeah. Hobby's in there. Um <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's fun. It's bad, but it's fun. You know, uh, uh, I. It sounds like it's kind of like uh, you're taking uh, the droidica, droidica deck that would mm -hmm. run like Crossfire and mix it to like yep. a light side. I like that. Right. Yeah. Like and light side destroyer droids. <laughs> yeah. So, um, because I like the aim, the aim high, just, um, mm -hmm. just regular effect, and it really doesn't see play at all. Um, whereas the crossfire does see play in destroyer droids, mm -hmm. it sees play in the ASM destroyer droids deck, um, and uh, so I did something with that. Uh, we're yeah. on episode. Uh, we just we just released episode eleven of the podcast mm -hmm. uh, earlier this week, which was a ROPS forced servitude deck, courtesy of uh, Mister Wackling, Eric Hunter. Um, okay, and that's that an way. interesting deck because you know you look at it, and you think. You know, there's this is just weird, and it's it's it works like really well if you can get things going because the idea is to play for servitude, um, which then allows you to pitch a pitch a droid or whenever you lose a droid, it covers the it covers the, life force yeah. equal to its forfeit or something. Right, right, right. Yeah. right. So you have like fully immune attrition things like Maul, Sith Infiltrator, and Palpatine and Sidious. And then you just pitch Guri for seven, and they just stay yeah. on the table. Yep. It's it's yep. kind of like a um, a savrip on steroids, and then you yeah. can just swap like Forlom um, in your hand for Guri and Lost because it's Rops. Because you can and, swap uh, once for battle, yeah. yeah, and just keep your stuff on the table. Yeah, that sounds wow. pretty neat. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it's very good against. Apparently, it's very good against. There is good in him. Pod racing. <laughs> <laughs> so well, me, so uh, Chris Worsh is just to watch deck. out. Yeah, I'm looking for a deck to beat those uh, T I G I H pod racing decks. Well, no, that's only Worf's. So if you want to be Chris Worf specifically, this is the deck for you. Now, yeah. uh, I saw Kyle Kruger playing a pod racing uh, shield busting deck uh, for There's Good in Him, like yesterday. Well, and so yes, I did see a revolution on the uh, blockade <laughs> uh, bridge. Revos. I mean, it's a shielded card. <laughs> it is. <laughs> But it yeah. doesn't mean that people don't use it. If you've already right. pulled the pod racing shield and you mm -hmm. pulled the, you know, you battle plan grabber and yep. power mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, uh, I think Worf has a I think Worf has a, a, a TIG deck out there uh, that starts Goonita with yeah. the idea oh, okay. that um, right off the bat you're gonna play grabber, battle order, power, 
cloud racing. I mean, you yeah. name it. And something's going to, something stupid's going to stay on the right. table. Yeah. Right. And they're going to, and they might play the, they might pull a shield suboptimally too. I mean, that's, that's mm-hmm. what I've noticed when I play watch your step Raiders, people will play the, the anti palace Raider shield that is just completely unnecessary. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's just uh, like, it's like, I think it's wiped them out all of them. Yeah. It's oh, wiped them out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's almost just like sort of a instinct to play mm-hmm. that shield against that mm-hmm. deck, but there's right. the virtual palace Raiders now that kind of get around it or whatever. And so you don't have to, it's not as much of a priority anymore. Yeah, plus it's just, you don't, you don't end all, There's so many other ways to, to limit, limit battle destinies. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, yeah. Cause that's right. the main thing that it, and still just only limits them to two destinies opposed to like, mm-hmm. if they're going to drop more than three, it just limits them to all. Right. Them, right. Know? So uh, like, so like not that great. justice. They pull, is better. Yeah. You know, they pull that, they pull that, they pull their, their grabber at the beginning of the game. Mm-hmm. You, you stumble setting up. So they pull out, they pull battle order. And then and then they pull the the watcher step shield and then suddenly you know you can drain it Kessel or yeah. you can uh, or, or retrieve for free or whatever mm-hmm. yeah like, get your get your into three to go through or drain into non battleground or yeah I love it when players do their first like before you even activate or anything they just drop <laughs> all four of their shields like Anthony Howard Batmouse is probably one of those people like he'll just try okay here's the four shields I know I'm gonna need this game <laughs> and then you just play a deck like this and you just blow them out like because <laughs> I feel like I saw Revolution. that a lot more with uh when it was only three back in back in the day when it was yeah. only three uh, that you could pull because you'd pull people would pull secret plans battle order and their grabber Mm-hmm. Yeah, is their first action. Yep. Yeah. And then you have like, oh, here's a revolution, and you're just sitting there. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. So, in terms of uh, what's coming up in the next little bit, we've got we've got Jawa Cup, we've got OCS. Are you guys in OCS? I know who CRG you are. I am. Yep. I finally uh-huh. got to eight games last uh, last month. Hey, you're uh, nice. now, now, you gotta, now you got to get to eight games this month because you, if you want to get the the reverse side, it, it's right. the Falcon. And if you want both sides, both you sides need to play. I have a foil flip Falcon. Thank you. Nice. There you <laughs> oh, go. Where'd you get that um, from? Uh, I think one Mr. Advocate sent me one a little while ago. Hey, phase to have good friends. What about you, CRG? Are you, or, or, or sorry, Corin? Are you playing in uh, in the OCS? I uh, every month that I sign up for the OCS, I end up playing less Star Wars cards than <laughs> the, than the games than the months that I that I don't. So I was I was definitely planning on getting in on this month, and then uh, this month happened, and I was like, yeah, I'll just play. Maybe I'll maybe, play on maybe the June. Table. Yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe June. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, gonna be unemployed in June, so, so that'll. Uh, <laughs> That'll free fun up employed. Some, free up yeah. yeah, yeah, fun employed. Yep, fun yeah. employment. Well, no, besides, I, I, go ahead. I bought a season pass. Um, yeah, for this I season. Um, so one of my goals for this year is to play more competitive Star Wars. I've been playing in more leagues and more OCS stuff, and uh, you know the the quarantine leagues have been great. The best uh, way to get out, better yeah. is to challenge yourself against people who are right. better than you. So right. play and play play good and better decks in competitive formats. 100%. So as well as playing on the occasion some very very bad decks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jer- Jerry, have you played any games this month? I have not yet. Okay, we'll any- talk about that later. I've we'll <laughs> <about that> <laughs> I- I played a couple games uh, right now. The Colorado uh, League is going on. We're doing a premiere uh, New Hope sealed uh, event for our league. So I played a couple games in that, and that's been my mm-hmm. main main focus Star Wars wise. Mm-hmm. But I know um, Corin, you were kind of instrumental in the sort of jawa format reset yeah uh, it's come across recently do you want to sort of get into how that came about well um every so often i've uh, ever since the jawa cup i i kind of have been testing the waters i was like do we need to do anything about the jawa format you know is there Mm -hmm. any interest here and uh i mean the way the jawa format was before it was just i mean it, it basically was pointless because all the cards that were banned had been errated so it just wasn't Mm -hmm. It, yeah, I mean, it's just it's kind of yeah. it kind of had out outlived its outstayed its welcome or whatever. Uh, so it needed an update. Yeah, it was based off of you know the worlds from the year before right. mm-hmm. and all that. So yeah, and I it's funny because what I want the Java format to be is a format that people play from time to time when they're tired of 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 playing the the competitive mm-hmm. stuff, 
But it seems like what happens is people either it's like either everyone wants to like completely drop everything and we're going to have a 60 player event <laughs> or nobody wants to play it at all. So <laughs> I I we'll see where that goes. I I just mm -hmm. um so so we did when we did the update I wanted to do we do this little league we're calling it the with the help of Batmouse we oh, named God. it the uh, the Boonta Eve Jawa Brawl. And it's just a, a 15 games over the course of 45 days. And I did a, I did a, um, uh, uh, some achievements. I'm probably going to throw out more achievements. And, uh, once I organize <laughs> my cards, I'm going to, I'm going to like put up some, some cards as prize support or something. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. But no, no, uh, not, not doing it. What I didn't want with it either is, is to cut to a top, a top eight or a top 16 mm -hmm. and have that drag on for another three months. <laughs> and then, you know, we're just getting done with the summer Jawa brawl. And then, oh, now Worlds is over. So we got to start thinking about Jawa Cup again. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely like where you, where you sort of took it with and making it kind of a league and just sort of mm -hmm. a more slightly more casual thing. Last time we had like pairings and it was a whole yeah, thing. Yeah. And yeah. then it kind of spiraled out of control. But uh, yeah, I, I'm excited to to see what people come up with this year for Jawa yeah. for sure. Uh, uh, yeah. And you know what? I like the 45 day because. If we want to keep doing this, we could easily do it like as a 45 day, 15 game tournament or a league, essentially. Yeah. And then you could always go back and say, OK, these were the top. You can have like I would say have people record what decks they're playing. So that way we can go back mm -hmm. and change the meta to like a yeah. new five yeah. decks. So, oh, well, people are playing this uh, more on the OCS or something. Mm -hmm. Why don't we ban watch your step right, or right. people are playing a lot of tick well mm -hmm. let's ban tig uh yeah. oh well, well i mean are you going to give me people a mains platform does that mean that mm -hmm. they get hiko or throne room mains mm -hmm. back right right uh, it's yeah um, I, I like that diversity a lot so right. and to continue with something like that i think mm -hmm. it's the the right direction yeah. for it to go yeah. instead of saying right. I, and don't get me wrong i love what bill did last year running uh -huh. it and everything and it was a great time yeah 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 but something like this, I think, is going to be a little bit more acceptable right. in the community. Right. Yeah, right. So it's probably and a well, lot more sustainable too. Mm -hmm. And the other they'll thing put in a ton of time with that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The other the other thing is that that I kind of like about the the concept of the Jawa format is mm -hmm. this is kind mm -hmm. of a Star Wars card format where we can ban cards. Like right. Star Wars cards historically, you don't ban cards. So if there is a if there is a competitive balance issue that comes up, and and there's a 35 page competitive balance thread <laughs> um you know we don't have to we don't have to be like oh does this need to be errated mm -hmm. you know we can just say okay yeah well then it's banned in jawa if you don't like it in open you can just play jawa you know? <laughs> yeah no, that's a that's a good point because basically yeah, right. that's sort of where when the original Java Cup came out, I was so sick of playing old allies map mm -hmm. and throne room, uh, and rops that it was just mm -hmm. like just let me let me try playing WAP, let me try playing right. Hyper Giant, right. let me try playing Watch Your Step and see what happens. Yeah. And, right, yeah. and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be a perfectly balanced format either because we're gonna it's gonna change in six months. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's no intent to keep it, I guess, balanced in the way that like the open meta has to be. Mm -hmm. uh, in case, so I, I agree with you completely. When I, I was I was so excited for the Java Cup last year because I got sick of watching the OCS games and it was TRM versus ROPS. Yeah. Diplo versus ROPS. Everything versus ROPS. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. 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 So, I mean, AOBS, I, I can, I mean, AOBS is like is kind of more fun and interactive to play against. Um, Tree of Retina Rops mm -hmm. was very much um, we're going to set yeah. up on route here. We're going to ignore you. We're not going to get punished or penalized for that. And then if you want to flip us back, you got to come battle on our terms. Oh, and by the way, mm -hmm. my battle last is total is plus five, so I win. Bye. <laughs> um, that was definitely Rops. The, 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 the yeah, the year. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that was that was the year of Rops. I, I mean, I'm excited to play in it um, right. Again, I've got some off-meta decks mm -hmm. that yeah. probably aren't going to survive very well um, in an open meta, um, you know. But they'll, I mean, hopefully they do just fine in the yeah. Java format. So, yeah. well, and people, and people will uh, hopefully people will kind of take this as a little bit of a lighter thing, so they'll mm -hmm. be playing right. not necessarily just that. Oh, there's good in him isn't banned, and that would be <laughs> really good in the MPC. So that must be that. Yeah. That's going to be the right. only deck that anybody plays. Hopefully right. for, for, play, you know. And for example, I saw Bastion this morning playing a My Kind of Scum Jawa deck, of all things. 
So there is uh, it's even possible for the for the best players in the world to yeah to, to do this. So here's a and random then, question. But, uh, we were just talking about this. So why is it every year in the last like couple of years we've had the year of AOBS or the year of ROPS? Like why don't we have a light side game to uh, uh, like year like that? The decade of TRN. Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, I was gonna say because, because, uh, because, uh, uh, like my father before me was pretty. Yeah, or at least yeah. that. That's well, even That's TRM fair. now is really solid. Uh, oh, it's it's really solid. I mean, we so, saw what just Hayes Hunter did with it in the NPC, but right, yeah, right. Well, and you've got that core of the other thing is you've got that core of light side characters that. Um, on the one hand, means that every light side deck has the same fifteen characters. But hey on now. the other mm-hmm. hand, that means that you play. I can play these fifteen characters in Hitco or Throne Room or Legend or yeah or, or whatever. You know the. I mean, Old Allies has a lot of the same characters. It's you know there's several platforms where you can play that same that same core of a deck. So yeah. here's my question: How do you guys feel about a reset? I have not been around long enough to comment on such a thing. So I will <laughs> abstain. It's always the conversation says. that comes up like in the Slack chat or on yeah. the yeah. Come on. It was, it was a little rough to. for that. Right. Okay. My, my, my sort of stance on it well, is sort of. Oh, I don't want to hear about your stance. Oh, fine. <laughs> You're on every week. Kendall, sure. what do you feel? Okay. So my, I've been, I've been, I've been thinking about this. Please take it. I've been, I've been thinking about this today, and okay. for the first time ever, I agree with uh, Joe Olson. Whoa! Um, time out. <laughs> uh, I'm writing this down. <laughs> uh, uh, or, what's or at today? Least, at least, at least, I mean, this it, it may not be exactly the same, but a little while ago, he said, you know, we're gonna eventually get a reset, right? Like in in whether it's. A year from now, two years from now, five years from now, or whatever. Um, so what I want to see happen in the next let's say we have let's say we have four more virtual sets before before we really have to reset, like before just it's a critical mass and and it's and it's just unrealistic. Okay. Who ca- okay. take who cares about power creep for the next four sets? Give me give me power eight characters. Give Whoa, me, this give isn't me a magic. Vader. This is not magic. You know? We are not making a mo- or a uh, a black lotus. We're not making any of the moxes here. <laughs> <laughs> give, bring back missions. I don't know. You you know, like okay, like, Robbie. <laughs> you are now Robbie. <laughs> I don't, I don't even. I don't even remember what missions did. Me. Oh, you don't want to. Uh, no, you bring, know what? Bring, the, bring, the old like, the old they spice mining was okay. Yeah. That's I mean, I mean, honest, honestly, let me let me pull my Sarlacc from under my starting effect. That's that's. Oh yeah, that's starting, effect, starting effect manipulation was a lot of fun back in Legacy. But now, um, I know you don't want to hear what I have to say on the reset topic, Dan. But no, I do, it. I do. It's just like uh, I said, you're on every week. But no, we believe it. This is going to be a question I bring up every week. All right, all right, that's fair. <laughs> I, Maybe I, I don't know. Watch. Sort of, I sort of think that. We should basically just plan for it ahead of time and do a yeah. reset every like ten sets. So like we know at the start of mm-hmm. set one that we're going to reset at set ten. So that way you can build towards it. Yeah, and by the right. time you're making set eight, set nine, sort of like what you said, you can make some crazy power creep cards. Yeah. Uh you can sort of make maintenance cards again or something, mm-hmm. you know, towards mm-hmm. the end of the rain. And then yeah, give, uh, us, give us the legit reflections for. Right, exactly, yeah. and then and then it'll all go away, and then we'll all start over, and and basically do two sets a year and reset every ten sets. So basically, a reset every five to six years would be yeah. sort of how I, I think it, it could be yeah. done if we plan for it, and then that way, when you got into it and you 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 knew ahead of time, because I think mm-hmm. a lot of animosity comes up of like, oh well, I got so you know good at the meta and I figured it all out, and then you just changed everything on me. People get really upset when it yeah. sort of like crashes yeah. down on you. But if you know, if you knew at set five that this card you know mm-hmm. that you really liked at set five came out, mm-hmm. you know it's only gonna be there for five more sets, you can plan around that and you can figure right. out ways right. to and, and that and that works better than than like a than like a rotation because the set like the the reason rotation works in like something like Magic the Gathering is they have you know mm-hmm. they have their blocks that where they establish this theme. So you know, it'd be different if it'd be different if all of the resistance characters were in two sets, 
Yeah. And then, yeah. It, you, you know, yeah. but we kind of build on everything the way that the way that mm -hmm. it works. All right. Looks like Matt is back again. Right, like Matt is back yeah. And Matt, Matt uh, you Sorry might be having guys. some echo issues. Uh, I think your audio is doubling up. Yeah. Is that better? Uh, yes. Appears to be. Yes. Thank you. So, yeah. Sorry about that. Thanks, yeah. Matt. Matt's having some connection issues, but he's he's back. Uh, I still hear the echo. I do hear the echo a little bit still, but yeah. Uh, now so, it's gone. But yeah, we were talking about the reset. Uh, I, again, this is something that hasn't been. It's something that's going to be talked about. Uh, but you know what? Let's just not beat the dead horse it's, at this point. And it's, I'm just more surprised that Kendall and Joe Olsen agreed on something. <laughs> that is pretty because it is Joe. <laughs> Well, the thing is, the thing is, he's he's better at Star Wars cards than me, and I've gotten better at Star Wars cards over the last six months. And so, a lot of things that six months ago I did not think he was right about, uh, I was wrong about. That's so, fair. Yeah, that's fair. All right. So, cool. uh, I think it's that time, Jerry, that we switch gears. Yeah, we're we're going about halfway to, uh, through here. So yeah, yeah, we're at we the have good halfway our, point. You guys have seen our show before, so you know our normals. You know, it's a hit, swing and a miss, card mm -hmm. of the week, that kind of stuff. All so, that fun uh, yeah, you want to start with the swing and a miss section, Dan? I, yeah, I like keeping that narrative or that uh, schedule. Right. So, we'll go with swing go, and a miss. You go first, go first is how it usually goes. So, my first one, um, so far for the OCS, we've got Greg Shaw at 11-1, and one, mm -hmm. who we're pretty sure is going to make it, but we have sort of a mishmash of a bunch of other people. Um, yeah. But uh, my first one here is um, uh, Aeneas23, or Nick Reich, uh, will qualify for the OCS in May, because he's currently 5-0. and oh. Is that it's a hit or swing and a miss? I'm sorry, but I, I this is going to sound bad, but I don't remember who Nick Reich is. He's a Texas player. Yeah, a Texas I, I, pretty, I thought he was a Texas player, but I wasn't sure. So, I mean, he's not like one of those big names. I, I, I'm, I don't. He's got a shot, but I just see like somebody. I, I just basically he's not like that I saw that was undefeated who had had at least played you know five games or more. Okay, I was and gonna say because Jerry, was Jerry, that's why I picked him. I have no. Sp I, I like Nick. I've met him a few times. Yeah. <laughs> Stand up guy, but I just sort of picked the only other undefeated guy that I saw that had that's, played. At least and that's five fair, games. and that's fair, but I just think that to go undefeated, first of all, is going to be really hard. Uh, Jared mm -hmm. is still, I want to say he's 10 and 2, and Greg are the only other, Greg's 11 and 1. And so I'm not going to say this is not any saying that me that, that I'm not saying that Nick's a bad player, but it's going to be really hard because there's still a lot of people who haven't got their games in this month. And <laughs> That's Jerry, I'm just gonna say, I'm going to say this, Jerry. I'm two and zero. Oh I'm two and zero. Oh, so I'm currently yeah. undefeated. So You're undefeated. I, I'm going to say this: like I need to get games in because, and but the likelihood of me going undefeated is going to be a lot greater than like Nick. I obviously. never said he would go undefeated. I just said he would qualify for me. So the op the the person the non betting man and uh, the realist in me. And having read Jared Napolitano's re tournament report from when he qualified, a lot has to go right for a person to qualify in a month. And so I'm mm -hmm. going to swing and a miss on this. Yeah. I mean, okay, I think so. So I've got, I've got a take. Go so ahead. So the Boonti Eve Jawa Brawl starts in two days. So <laughs> all the best players are going to be playing Jawa. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> anybody, anybody that he plays for the rest of the month in May is going to be people scrambling to get their games in. Uh, and uh yeah he's gonna i don't even know who this guy is but he's he's five and oh he's got this he's got okay. this all right okay. I, like, I like the attitude corin thank you i uh I, i'm gonna stick with corin i'm gonna say he's uh, got it as well go nick just because you got it man five and oh <laughs> just gotta go six and one i mean what's wrong with that right he's his gotta sos get, he's gotta play me games, so he, he, he could use he could use a few good games there. he's gotta play what's, me what's your first one dan uh, Jared Napolitano will uh, survive and make it to this month's OCS. All right. So we kind of both chose si OCS. similar interventions. Yeah. Um, for Jared, like you said, he's 10 and 2. His SOS, let me see if I can pull this up very, very quickly. His SOS yeah. is. He's, just, decent. he's already qualified. Yeah, he's already qualified. That's right. He qualified last yeah. month or the month before. 
He's so qualified he's, Mark. Yeah, he oh, was already in. So swing and a miss on Dan. That's swing question. and a miss. Uh, okay, so yeah. Well, actually, no, no, no. He was, he's advanced, so that's a hit. And by some five, he survived it. So yeah, that's a guaranteed hit. That's, that's yeah. like that's like. Uh, I think that was also why boom. I picked. I picked for my question because I the, all the other players who were sort of close right now had already yeah. qualified or something. Right. So I was looking for someone who was off the the beaten trail. You know, so you know what surprised me so far? Bastion Bastion has played like I want to say Bastion has played a decent amount of games, but I want Six and I games, want I think. yeah, and I want to say he's three and three. He's not that bad. He is. Um, he's played five games and he has thirteen points. So that means he's only lost one game. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, right it's now. four and one, or two games, four and one, four and one. Yeah, he's four, he's four and one. Okay, so, so I mean, Bastion certainly math could, sucks. Do, could yeah. do it too. That's all right. Math, my math, math doesn't sucks. have to be your strong suit. All right, we'll go to my next one. Thanks. Um, so for April in the OCS, uh, Watto was I think the highest winning percentage deck for Dark Side. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was nine and one in April, uh, including five and zero oh versus No Idea decks. So with that in mind, Watto will be played more than the 10 times in May than it was in April. Is that it's a hit or swing and a miss? That's a hit. That's a hit. I'll take I'll take that, especially with people playing it in Jawa. It's going to be a really strong deck there. Yeah. I Without think people TRM be, and her people coming in. People yeah. will probably be playing in the OCS to test for, for the Jawa event. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so I could definitely see, I could definitely see it being pretty popular. Yeah, that's, that's, I like that. Yeah, uh, I've seen a lot of good builds from Watto too, mm-hmm. a lot of different ones, and people just love putting cards down and hurting your opponent. So, the, the, do you know what the answer is to Watto? Hyperdrive. Hyperdrive. <laughs> Hyperdrive. <laughs> I feel like, no, any deck that I, has any I deck that gets you uh, the canteen or the uh, Watto's junkyard is the counter. Yeah, because you can you 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 um you cover you up convert. their yeah, junkyard. Yeah. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, you convert their junkyard so they don't get their crazy good text on there, and mm-hmm. then um, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's definitely tough for for Watto dealing with hyperdrive. Yeah. Um, you play hyperdrive, only, you, you shut down the auto Watto. Watto. I only ever lose the Watto when I'm playing against someone better than me. So <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, Watto, Watto is one of those decks that can just absolutely, like, like court. It can absolutely punish you if you leave any sort of opening. Yeah, hundred yeah, so. percent. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't, I don't think it's been played often enough where people have really figured out how to handle it because mm-hmm. it puts pressure on so fast. Yeah, people, kind of like hunt down. It can make people make bad decisions, and then it's just a snowball. Yeah, I think it's even worse in the in the hunt down aspect of that because. Hunt down gets played a ton, and Watto doesn't. So, like, right. people are less mm-hmm. experienced playing against Watto. Right. So, like, oh shit, I'm already off my game because I'm losing two force before I even get to take a turn. And, you know, it just sort of it snowballs on you for sure if you don't know what you're doing. I remember when I was learning this game again, Watto was one of the decks I just absolutely hated playing against because it always yep. felt like you were just playing with one arm tied behind your back or mm-hmm. something. So, <laughs> all right, Dan, what's your next point? Force every time. It's... <laughs> yeah, that, and that's then pretty much that's what I always do is you, just... you save. You save two to to make them force them to put the uh, right kind of card down, but you still always, I always lost force to it, especially. Yeah, there's, there's no the reason. Deck, but you I never, know, it never occurred really to me to save the force. I just yeah, save the force and lose the two because I just yeah. figure they're paying me for two. Yep. Yeah. Or you just play wrong. or just play Honor of the Jedi. Dude, then, they, then they still have to play it straight up and put a card that. Yeah. They yeah. No, that totally makes down. sense. Yeah. I just, you're just, smarter than me. Yeah. Just put on. <laughs> just get honor. Just get honor. Of, just start honor of the Jedi, and you'll be fine. Well, you can't start honor of the Jedi. Start, you start insight. There you and go. And then you we'll upload. Yeah. <laughs> honor. Yeah. yeah. I mean, or just, honor be, just cheat and play on and start honor of the Jedi. Or you, you know, well, what you could do is use the signal as your starting interrupt, and then oh, start a, honor. Yeah, always a good decision. Yeah, always good. So I guess you could you could start uh, honor if you're doing the pod racing starting in right. Oh yeah, you or you know, alter where yeah. you occupy a battleground. Yeah, huh. and then they'll get their no escape out, and you'll be just feel real yeah. bad. Yeah. By that point, you, by that point, Wado should be off the table. And anyways, <laughs> so. all right, Dan. So your for next? my next question, QMC is the deck that nobody's talk is the best deck that nobody's talking about right now. The QMC. best deck that no one's talking about. Because I mean, we've seen a lot of like mine. What you have learned, we've seen Wattos, we've seen Tigs, <laughs> yeah. I mean, 
but I have seen, seen a lot of QMCs. I, I, think, I think we're going to see a lot more QMC in the Java meta because Court is gone and Hunt Down mm-hmm. is gone. Uh, even though yeah. QMC what does QMC is, even look like right now. I think QMC just runs like Hark and Han Chewie and the Falcon for space, mm-hmm. right? And, and just like you know, silly alien stuff with Maz and thing on the ground and and yeah. you know like i think before it had to do like home one type space package with all that stuff but i think with hanchui and the falcon like three of those and you know the hark Sef, you can probably try to hold mm-hmm. space with just that and then it gives you a few more deck slots to mess around with stuff on the ground and i mean i am a big fan of qmc i always have been i i, I don't know uh, if it's sort of like an underrated deck right now, maybe like you said, Jawa Cup will, will, will definitely be a big popular mm-hmm. popular choice there just because of some of the other... Um, I always thought it was really good against Hunt Down uh, as opposed to... Yeah. Uh, you know, like Court was kind of tough just because the space package was a lot faster than yours and, and right. they could just come and fight you in a lot of places. Yeah. But um, I don't I don't know if QMC is, is in, is in a, a great spot in the open meta just because I feel like it's still a little bit too... I don't know if slow is the right word, but just not quite tempo-y enough mm-hmm. um, yeah. for, for for the meta right now. I feel like, and also, Darkseid has um, a, a few amount of decks that are, are playing, like, slip sliding away with uh, the the deal objective. And, mm-hmm. and having, the, having the Executor plop at Bestman turn one or two uh, in some games would be real hard for QMC to deal with right That's now. That's fair. I feel like. yeah. I, I feel like if 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 QMC didn't get in that getting that helper in in set twelve didn't like cause people to play QMC, I don't feel like Han chewing the Falcon will. Which um, helper are you talking about? The the the, the, it's the Belt and Zy combo. Oh yeah, the Belt and Zy combo. Yeah, yeah, I I mean I don't think I've seen. I mean, granted, I'm not. I don't pay attention to stuff, but I think <laughs> I have played against. I've played I, when I've run into QMC on Gemp. It was either against Tom Hayde or someone whose name I didn't recognize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously Tom Hayde, yeah. uh, no QMC uh, supporter, and and I know like Charlie uh, Arlinson from Minnesota has been a yeah. big QMC as well. But, uh, 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 hey Matt, did your lights just go out? Uh, no, I'm here. Oh, okay. your, your screen looks a little weird for, yeah. for me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. oh good. No, yes. I, I'm, I'm, I've got all the I've got a green screen for video on you all you guys something's going on with my internet here. Okay, which is very gotcha. unusual. No worries, no worries. I'm alive. Oh, okay. you. That's that's the important part. This is now a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> or at least okay. for one of us. So all right, so Jerry, my turn. next my next one. Uh, we've been talking a lot about the uh, the Jawa Cup stuff that's coming up. Um, mm-hmm. One deck that you weren't able to play last year in the Jawa Cup, but you can now is uh, the map objective. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, will that that deck will be a top pick for the uh, the upcoming Java League? Is that it's a hit or swing and a miss? Easily, it's a hit. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, a hit. Uh, I mean, map ne- maps wasn't in a good spot just because of like throne room and hit co and stuff like that. But now that you can't play those in Java, yeah. I'm interested to see some map versus OA games. I feel like there'll be a, a lot of both of those decks. And I feel mm-hmm. like they match up pretty well against each mm-hmm. other, depending on on who's the better player and, and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, fighting over Jakku and the system um, and, or, and all that good stuff. Or so. you just get super lucky if you're Chris Kelly in the NPC finals. It's been known to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. We'll, I mean, we'll we'll see. But I, in my in my little bit of testing, I haven't run into any any map. Uh, okay. And I just, I. I think a lot of the Jawa Cup players are still tired of it. That's and so part of it as well. Fair. Yeah, yeah. Another exciting, I, more different. You can play some slip sliding away starts, or you right. can yeah. play some other stuff. But I still feel like it'll be whether or not it'll be you know um, played a lot. I still think it's a solid choice for it's, that meta. Yeah, it's probably fine. not all the yeah. mains. Yeah, because being there, no, there won't be a ton of mains to throw at it at least, yeah, or the mains no, decks I, be weird like CPV type mains decks that yeah. aren't TRM or Hicko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you'll see Tig for mains and maybe Profit. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, those mm-hmm. kind of mains, which I think I think Map has a you know better chance of dealing with uh, right than, than TRM or Hicko. So, right. and there's also really good lists out there for Map as of you know very recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, 
Okay, so Leia V is the most popular card on Gemp right now. <laughs> oh, is that swing and a miss? So... <laughs> She's up there. She is. She, uh... I, I might argue that Leia's blaster rifle is the most argued play or the uh... most played card. That it seems like that card is in every deck right now. Jeez. I'll take Rescue in the Clouds for 500, yeah. Alex, on that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, Anger, Fear, guess, Aggression, well, Virtual <laughs> is, is probably the most played card. Oh, God. Well, Leia's okay. the most popular version of Leia, I think, that we've seen this month. Yeah. Uh, you know, she's, for those who watch the show, I, I've always been a huge fan of Leia V. Uh, I've been running her ever since, like, two years ago in my mm. TRM. And, and things like that just because i feel like she's super good against a lot of dark side cards and that's only seems to to get better and better so basically yeah. she just cancels so many leaders game texts uh whether they and it doesn't matter if they're imperial doesn't matter if they're republic doesn't matter if they're first order it just cancels a leader of ability less than five game text so mm -hmm. uh so good in space against certain pilots so good in the ground against veers and things like that so leia is my jam people know that yeah all right, is it mine the next one? You are the next one, Jerry. All right, CRG will like this one. So my uh, my last one for It's a Hit, Swing and a Miss is um, Hyperdrive will continue its Jawa Cup dominance from last year. I know last year it was it was one of the better winning percentage decks. It wasn't played a ton, but the, those who did play it, I think went like 5-1, and 6-1, and one, something like that uh, in the Jawa Cup last year. So with that in mind, uh, that'll continue for this one and we lost and we've lost crg we yeah did. i think he, I I think he agrees with that though <laughs> uh but yeah i'm pretty sure he's uh he's gonna say it's a hit on that one uh <laughs> I, I i don't i'm not sure how, what hyperdrive looks like against the meta i think the slip sliding away decks might hurt it because they're a little bit faster than some of the other dark side stuff at the time yeah. last year but, but um you know it could it could definitely be at least a decent light side choice i think light side's a little bit more it diverse in the Jawa cup. Yeah. For sure. I think that, I think that people are excited to play hyperdrive in, in the, in the Jawa cup is the sense that I've gotten. And so like the, I think I have ran into that a little bit in the, in the little bit of testing that I did. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I just, I don't know for a while, even, even after, even after the Jawa cup event, I was seeing a lot of hyperdrive on Gemp and the guy that I met in Columbus the one time played a hyperdrive deck. So okay. I, I'm, yeah, I don't know. I, maybe I'm biased, but I feel like a lot of people, a lot of yeah. people want to play hyperdrive. Yeah. It does seem to have to be kind of a pet deck for a lot of people. Well, I mean, people, we, there just a new objective for it. And it's one of those decks that has been around. It doesn't get the glamor, like a, say like a Watto from the same set or even Senate. So, and, Especially and, like non-virtual objective is so bad because it like, doesn't even let you play systems. It's like, terrible. Yeah, like yeah. before it even got virtualized, it was just so bad. Well, so. I mean, I will say this though: the other thing about it is, it, it's a little bit more restrictive on the objective, and I think that needs to be fixed. Like, you can't play non-unique aliens. You can't or play. You can't play Eopies in the deck. Play Eopies, yeah, which that is like almost <laughs> like come on. Yeah, the the other yeah. big thing you're missing there is a is a is a Baragwin for yeah. the non unique yeah. aliens. I mean, yeah, yeah, you could get Yoxkit, but I'd rather have the Baragwin. Yeah, but uh, yeah, exactly. Like it, there's there's silly, just weird restrictions mm -hmm. on that card. Uh, so that, Chris that Kelly, if you're watching, that. fix it. And speaking of which, last week we did have a uh, our deck challenge was was around hyperdrive. Yeah. Um, yes. Thank the, you. Uh, we wanted yeah, six we'll get on to that later. We'll get to that later. On credits, so yeah, we'll have get to, to get that into later. that later. Uh, thank you. So yeah, we have one, one question more. left. Uh, so my question is, Jerry <laughs> will get off of League of Legends and play some OCS games. Oh well, I I will definitely try to play OCS. I've just like I said last week, I haven't been. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't found as many decks that I want to play with yet, but with 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 this challenge, I think I will have to you know put the gauntlet down. You and know, get, I'm going like, to say this: you, I challenged you at the beginning of the year, so you, I might not make you wear a uh, Penguins jersey because you haven't <laughs> played, but I know I'm going to make you wear the uh, my Vegas Knight Mark Andre Fleury jersey 
Matt would love to get you a pic- uh, get a picture of you in this. I'm <laughs> sure he would. I'm sure he would. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna do my best to to get on and play a bunch more. For for me, it's just uh, I, I haven't. I haven't messed around with my decks as much as I would have liked to in the last little bit. And I just, I have been a little, I think the Jawa cup is more what I'm excited about. Like what oh, Corin okay. said. That's fair. Like, That's fair. Tired of playing, tired of playing TRM, tired of playing. Maybe, uh, uh, yeah. you know what? I'm going to say this. Maybe we'll get an episode of you and I on the Jawa cup with uh, Matt yeah. and Kendall doing commentary. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that would be a good time. Yeah, we can we we can arrange that. Okay, yeah, all right, yeah, definitely. Okay, definitely. so I think that's going to be it for swinging and miss this week. Uh, that was our last one. That yeah, was our so. last one. So, um, we usually go so. into like, the the card of the week. Yes, we that's do. What, yeah. So I think this time I was light side. Yes, and I chose, were... I chose I chose a weird card uh, in my opinion, but uh, no, I, it's, it's a card not a weird card. I think it is kind of a weird card. So in Virtual Set 8, they made a card. They made, like, that's when they made the No ID objective and everything. And they made a card that has K2SO on it, but it's called I've Got a Bad Feeling Wait, About. The, is that the card you sent me? That's the card I sent you. Oh. Cause... Anyway, what card did you pull up? Uh, uh, you got HCF. We're going to talk about HCF as your card of the week. We're talking about HCF? Oh, I, I was going to use that, but I felt... I. I feel like I already used that one. But anyways, no, we'll, go with, yeah, we'll go with HCFV because I was going to use that. But anyways, uh, Hanshui and the Falcon V is a card that was tweaked recently in set 12. Um, and it's, in my opinion, changed more about the meta than I thought it would. Mm-hmm. Uh, I thought that people would be reluctant to give up their Chewy with Bowcaster and their Solos out of their deck. But I've actually been seeing a decent amount of HCF. Uh, v in, in a lot of obviously no idea is is a is a big mm-hmm. uh, of yeah. it because it, it was looking for more efficient space packages anyway um, and and all that but I I like its ability in QMC I like being able to use it um, you know I, I've even tried it in Throne Room and in mm-hmm. and obviously and there is good in him it is like super good you just run like three of that and that's all you need for space right um, well I mean so I've seen a lot of it in Y4 Ops. Uh-huh. That's a, that's the probably the biggest deck that I've seen it in, just because uh, I've we've seen a lot of Y four ups, and I think that's a, that's going to be the deck to watch out in the Jawa format. But yeah, yeah, it's it's really strong in it's really strong in Jawa. I think I think uh, it's one of those decks that when you take the the very top layer of decks off, it's right it's right solidly at that second tier mm-hmm. um, where yeah. where it has it has yeah. the ability to, to just, yeah just really do well. All right, right. that's a good. All right, Dan, what about you? So, Jeremy's card was HCF, so I found it fitting that it was going to be something that, that worked well against HCF. Bosk and Houndstooth V. So, <laughs> I, I, I just realized this card, well, I think, I don't know who told me, maybe, oh, maybe it was Justin Desai, but this card is really good against HCF. It's really good in uh, AOBS right now. Because or any deck that runs the new quietly observing because it still gets the the destiny plus two, and yeah. then you're playing against like a Hanshu and the Falcon. Well, this little guy either gets you a destiny to power or a destiny to attrition. So, and you play that in like an AOBS deck. I mean, the only problem, the only downside I have about this card is he's in a giant ship, but he can't have passengers. Yeah, that is a little weird. So for sure. people don't like Bosk. <laughs> he it's, smells- also a, it's, also a, it's also a capital for landing claw too so that's kind of yes. weird yeah but i mean it's it's a real i like it um i think that you're gonna see more of it with the hcf uh especially in, in aobs just because of that but yeah i i mean yeah. if you're playing like court i'd still go with boss just because he's a little bit more yeah. versatile but this yeah yeah, and, and if if you're already you know running that card, then you're already set up with a pretty good counter against mm-hmm. Watcher's Step if you happen to run up against them. So yeah. I think if I run, I don't think I run any Bosks in my court deck. You don't? I think you yeah, should. I don't, I don't think, think I do. do. I was going to say that sounds like it's a bad deck. <laughs> yeah, it's a bad yeah. deck. We should, we should break Bosk it down. Very useful. Yeah, maybe be a bad <laughs> bad deck breakdown. So boss, yeah, yeah boss V is. I hope that my court deck is not a bad deck because it's <laughs> it, it, it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to be pretty 
I've 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 put a lot of time and effort and like like you looked at other people's lists and stuff. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. I don't think everybody plays Bosk in their core deck. I'll have to look. I'll have to review that. Most of them do. I I do. Maybe maybe. Jerry, do you play Bosk in your court? I do. Yeah. Uh, I don't play court all that often. So three out of four players here are actually good players. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Right, um, yeah. Okay, I would put well, a Bosk V or a Bosk in Shift yeah. V in my in my in a court deck. Yeah. For sure. He's, yeah. he's I mean I agent. like Bosk V. Bosk V is a classic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why. Maybe I, I don't know why he's not in the deck. You know, sometimes I mean I've always said this court wants to be a seventy five card deck, so Yeah, it does. Like you, you can't put everything that you want. Sixty aliens deck. and fifteen I don't know what else to play. <laughs> <laughs> You are not wrong, Dan. Yeah. And so, then uh, I think I challenged uh, our our guest host to come up with a card of the week. I know CRG did. I don't know if Kendall did. Yes, and they did yes, it. I tell have. me. Sweet. I have a so, card yeah, of the what, week. What do you guys have? Go ahead, uh, Corin. So I didn't know if I was if it was supposed to be a surprise. That's um. So my card of the week is on the edge. Okay. Uh, okay. It's like from like Premiere or something. It's a Lost Premier. Interrupt. You uh, target a rebel ability above two uh, and say a number and you draw a destiny. It's got to be bigger than that number and you retrieve that many force or the rebel is lost. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was playing this. uh, I I managed it. It used to always be a hundred years ago. It used to always be played in watch your step. Uh, Yeah. But uh, recently it's, it's not, Uh, I think mostly because of like code clearance. Um, Um, That and a dark time. I mean, I know okay. you could say under, like you could say if you're, if you know you have a six, you could say four to get the four, but yeah, with dark time, you got people are you got to be careful with something like that. Uh, yeah, right. uh, yeah, that's right. Well, well, but the thing about it is, is it's the only card in all of Star Wars cards that's ever made me like actually think about tracking. <laughs> um, yeah, because you have to say like you have to know exactly what you're going to draw. You don't just you you don't just check your deck mm-hmm. and be like, okay, there's there's four fours and one one. I think it's okay for me to battle. You know, you you have to know exactly. <laughs> what you're and uh, and I've been playing this watch your step uh, this watch your step pod racing deck that's kind of a shield busting thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so and so I figure, well, they're they're not going to be able to pull the the code clearance shield, or if they do, then they're not pulling something else. Yeah. Uh, so, right. so I, I would, but I was playing, I was like, yeah, this is, this is making me actually, you know, pay attention to where my, you know, where my sixes are. Cause there's also a bunch of sixes in the deck. Yeah. And I was like, it's like, this, this is the kind of thing that'll make me better at star Wars cards. <laughs> yeah, I used to love playing on the edge and watch your step. Cause you yeah. play it and then you play it from lost pile mm-hmm. uh, again. And it's like, yep. especially if you're in a match play situation, like, yeah, I would, I almost always like my 60th card in a match play situation would be on the edge for light side, just because mm-hmm. like, back way back in the day, you could play interrupts from under your starting effect. And that was always one that you stuck in there. Oh, I need five force right away. Pfft, play that interrupt from under my starting effect. That was okay. one I, I, hated, always, I hated those times. <laughs> yeah, it was a little crazy, but you know, also, you know, dark side could stuff like limited resources under their starting effect and play True. it on you. Like, it was, it was, it was a bogus, silly time. But anyways, um, so what about those you, were, uh, those Mr. Were the Matt? Case of times. What about your? Uh, card week? I had two, one for each side. Uh, okay. My right. dark side card is Cold Feet Virtual, mm-hmm. uh, because as we go into the Jawa Cup, uh, I think we're going to see a lot more shield busting shenanigans, like we've been talking about tonight. <laughs> we talked about that and a lot today. Dark side, yeah. yeah, dark side's going to need more than four or five shields and pulling cold feet out is, uh, mm-hmm. or putting cold feet in is probably a good meta call as well, because Diplo is not banned in the Java cup and Diplo is one deck that can run uh Savrup and, uh, yeah. has in the past. And so that can cancel Savrup. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I was going to uh, my... ask you what the reasoning was behind cold feet over turn it off, turn it off. But that, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, my light side card is free ride combo. Okay. Uh, because uh, Entanglements is banned in the Java Cup, but there's nice there's this nice uh, dark deal objective that uh, reared its head in a couple of different formats in the NPC, yep. and so I think people um, may be risking themselves if they have free ride combo in for an open meta, take it out for a Java meta. 
So yeah, uh, yeah. Two cards. Um, occupation is still a thing, even if mm-hmm. you, you know, don't remember Bingo. that it is. A thing, so. Are, are yeah. people playing right. occupation in the in the dark deal list? Yes, I think they're, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, don't, they don't play dark deal. Yeah, yeah they don't. Yeah, they, they don't, don't play dark deal. They're, they're not playing they have, this. occupation. Yeah, yeah, they're not playing this. They're not playing the sector to set up dark deal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. The best. Yeah. And we, we could see some like Hoth walkers or some shenanigan like that. That's so yeah. two cards yeah. that you may have. Yeah. Two cards that you may have in an open meta. Keep them in for the Java Cup. And it's a use five that you can use to gain information from your opponent's mm-hmm. hand if they're yeah. not playing. Right. Right. You know, I, I was playing a game yesterday, card, and you can see if they have a Vader. See if they have a Gig mm-hmm. randomly. Stuff like that. So. Yep. I was playing yesterday and learned that my opponent had. Um, an EPP Dengar, which then changed what I was about to do because I don't want Dengar to come down at me. Or the best yeah. possible thing, you could steal a skiff from their hand. <laughs> I mean, that happens all Good the night, time. everybody. Jerry's drunk. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not drunk. Not yet. Not, not yet. Okay. Not yet. Uh, so, all right. uh, the week, and those then were the cards of the week. Uh, spelling challenge. I'd like to save the spelling challenge for last. Last. Okay. Yeah. So we'll do the but deck You know what? Challenge. Yeah, the de- we will go on to the deck building challenge. So Jerry said it earlier. Uh, last week, uh, Matt Crowley came on and he had a deck building challenge where he presented anybody who completed it getting six cards on uh, out their credits will define would complete it. Well, uh, I guess it wasn't that hard because literally within the next 24 hours, one Mr. Bastion Winklehouse came yeah, out Bastion. and accomplished it. Uh, so congrats to Bastion for uh, succeeding where virtually any, nobody else could. <laughs> yeah, hey I mean, uh, yeah, and I, I, I just got Ooh. a PM a couple of days ago from Matt CRG. He he had it as uh, accomplished as well. Um, six cards on uh, oh. on credits, and you won that game, right? I did. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, Bastion did it first, so we'll we'll have to give him first dibs, first credit for for cracking yeah. that one. <laughs> But yeah, six cards on credits will do fine, and winning the game definitely not easy. So uh, thanks everybody who's been participating, and and everybody who mm-hmm. submitted those. We always appreciate it. This one I came up with this week. Uh, I feel like is kind of interesting. Sorry, so, people. I was going through um, light side decks, and I was thinking like, okay, well, there's there's at least three light side decks that I can think of that could win a game of Star Wars cards while never deploying a, ca- a, a a character to a battleground site. Hidden Base can win a game without ever deploying a character to a battleground site. Yavin 4 can win a game without, mm-hmm. you know, EBO wins games all the time without deploying characters yeah. to battleground sites, right? Is there a dark side deck that you can think of that could do that? Because I struggled to come up with one. So if you can... Play a, de- a game on GIMP with a dark side deck, whatever the heck you want it to be, in the open or Jawa Cup format. No, we're going to stick this to the open. Stick to open? All right, stick whatever. Stick to the open. Uh, open format. Um, and you can put a, a character oh. to a non battleground site. You just cannot put a character to a battleground site. What about TCL? This, this includes undercover spies. Yeah. So, and that's where I think TTO and some other decks will struggle. Because yeah. you also have to win. So, <laughs> if you can do it with TTO, do it. Show me. Yeah, and, and right. this is why I said the open format, because you're going to play against decks like a Throne Room, or yeah. Hitco, or stuff like that, where... TTO might be the only one that I can think... Like, Dark Side Senate, maybe, also? I was also but... thinking, uh, set your course. Yeah. See? So maybe this one might not be the hardest. It was just one that I came up with about two this hours is a, ago. Because I'm, I'm going to say this. We did have a little bit of a break where people weren't even trying our challenge because they realized they were a little hard. So, so I'm glad to see that Bastion and CRG came out last week and uh, accomplished our you challenge. You can't deploy characters to a battleground yeah. site. No so characters. basically the, space decks. Yeah, so no droids. No, no undercover no, spies. No undercover spies. Um, Those, Wait, wait, time out. What about uh, vehicles? I, I would say Hoth Walker. Yeah. No, no, I, no, no cards with ability no, or no draw. cards with ability to battleground sites. That's yeah. the, so, sort of what I, so, I wanted. Okay. I want to see dark side space. So that, that, it's sort of what so I'm that opens up U3PO. So that, that opens up U3PO. 
It, no it droids, no cards with ability, <laughs> no <laughs> undercover spies. Every, every plan under a microscope, they're all going to No starships. If, if you just say no characters or vehicles, I think that covers it. There you go. No characters yeah. or vehicles to battleground sites. Or starships. No starships. Star because ship. you can put you a starship star down. Ship to a battleground site. See, all right, I hate you all. <laughs> well, no, Stop they talking. Power zero, like, why? It wouldn't help. Okay. No, but... Maybe we should just pick a different. No team. characters or vehicles no. to okay, a battleground site. I like it. To a battleground site. <sighs> See, this is yes, too much. You can, I, yes. I, no, 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 no. You cannot have any characters, starships, vehicles, any cards on. You can have devices or creatures. That's it. <laughs> okay. Creatures. Are we paid, oh, are so we you have to use the, that, 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 that one okay. creature that eats the that eats the force icon. I think I trick. think everyone Queen. who's watching or listening would get the gist of the challenge. <laughs> yes, <right>. yes. <laughs> well, I think I think our go, I think our uh, guest stars are just like going to give you a hard time, Jerry, because it's fun. <laughs> So I'm again, again, again congrats to Bastion for accomplishing it next week. Again, either PM, uh, PM myself and Jerry, or hit us up in Slack. Let us know when you guys have accomplished it. Uh, game links will be required. So again, this challenge is win with only a dark side space deck. <laughs> you of. can't go to ground at all. That's right. Boom. That's right. All right. Can you so go to battlegrounds. Yes. Yes. 100%. Yep. Okay. Anyway. So, so at um, this point, uh, <laughs> first of all, you, you know do. what? Uh, we actually, uh, before we get to our spelling challenge, because that's something I like to say for last, <laughs> I want to thank, uh, do a shout out to one Mr. Ming, uh, Ming Town, our good friend. Uh, haven't had him on the show oh, yeah. yet, but uh, I would yeah, like to at some point. On. He went out and made a player locator. Like, updated so, our player locator. It, we have one. We had one for a while, but it wasn't as quite as good as this one. Yeah, so. I mean, and this one is looking nice. Uh, I don't think there's anybody outside of the uh, North America right now. So all right. you European and uh, I'm sure Australian, get African, uh, you guys won't be able to. But yeah, it's really easy because, yeah, you just zoom in to like say if you're in an area and you want to just zoom in, figure out who, who you want to play with, like. You can easily, and then once you find, like, oh, I live in Alexandria, Virginia. Oh, hey, Barry, Mr. Uh, Barry Appelstein, he, he lives there, too. Or, oh, look, there's a few people in Washington. Uh, you just click on it and zoom in. Hey, there's Lenny Rubin and Gandalf the Gravy. So, or if you know, like, uh, somebody that, okay, let's go. You can easily type up here for one queso. Yeah. And oh, he lives over in Toto and Denver with a few other people. So yeah, it's it looks like it's really cool. Uh, yeah. Again, uh, it doesn't have anything outside like Canada, United States. Yeah, I, I think mean, they're, we they have, have a, Alaskan players. Pepper. How about that? The one for the Europeans and the yeah. other ones that they're working on. So, but yeah, this is right. definitely and cool. Thank you, Ming, for updating this. Change and, and it. it a lot more interactive and. Uh, yeah, and I think eventually, so yeah, I mean, if you could, all these other players, you know, you can get their stuff, and then I want to say that it's eventually opening it up, so, oh, you just click their thing, and then you can send them PMs. Yeah. So, yeah, um, good job, Ming, thanks for doing this, man. Definitely a way to, yeah, keep more in touch with, uh, you know, people in your local area, and if you're a new returning player who hasn't, uh, you know, figured out who's in your area yet, uh, check it out to... Uh, to do that and if you uh, haven't signed up for that i think it's uh it's pretty easy to get your name uh put in on there uh and uh we'll uh, we'll get you added and uh and that'll be that'll be pretty sweet so um definitely I think it's think, that time jerry yeah i think it is i think it is so you guys are familiar with star wars cards and their peculiar spellings uh and crazy shit so um do you have the uh, discord <laughs> open or do you have the chat yeah. open are you, you guys watching on twitch right now the stream uh, uh i'm not watching on on, on the stream no should i got discord no out. you shouldn't we would like you not to because we'd want you to cheat at the spelling challenge yeah we are not cheaters <laughs> so, so yeah i think what we should do is we'll start off with matt and then we'll go to kendall okay or do you guys want to represent one of you to be the designated speller because at <laughs> risk right now is a giant sized foil 
legend objective. We've had two people. Did, did Hayes get it? No, no. I guess he. Matt yeah, Carulli. It it's only Taco Bell. You're Carulli, and then no, Carulli didn't do his. Carulli missed the one that we had for him, but he did end up spelling Mithron. To yes, do and her, I did uh, challenge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that, that was. Oh crazy. yeah, and somebody was supposed to get his prize, and yeah, okay, so we're good there. Uh, but the only one who actually spelled their word has been Taco Bill. Yeah. And I don't know if you guys know Taco Bill, but do you really want him to be the only one? <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I, I say one of you guys should be the designated. <laughs> or do you both want to attempt it? I think we should both attempt it because attempt it. because I am very confident, but I'm probably also wrong. <laughs> and I think CRG is usually right about things, but he doesn't have the same confidence level. So, <laughs> okay. We should each okay. So, your card that you're going to be spelling is up on our, our stream right now. Your card hey. Go ahead. is Tivitz. <laughs> I don't even know so, what that is. It's a new hope. <laughs> He's rare a new hope. Yeah. Alien. He's the guy who has like his icon is the bunch of eyeballs instead of just the two eyes. Yeah. I would I might pronounce it Tizvit. Tizvit. Okay, yeah. yeah. I thought there were some Z's in there. Yeah. Yeah. Dan and pronunciation don't okay. always get along. Shut up, Jerry. <laughs> Go ahead, Kendall. Okay, I think it's T Z Z Z V T. You're, you you want to try Matt? Yeah, come on, Matt. <laughs> I have never seen this card. Oh come on, just um, just have a go at it. Uh, I'll say it again. Tizvit. 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 So. Uh, T. Z Z V T. Yeah. All right, it is it is T Z I Z V V T. Tzvit. I don't know how to that, that card Never. is going to it. Oh, if you'd have said that. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean it basically sounds like insert insert insect noise here. Is yeah, pretty called? much. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> I'm gonna say I blame Jerry for this one. I did come up with this one, yeah, although I gave you three choices. So yeah, no, that's, a, that's a good one because it's in a new hope card. I yeah. should know that. Like, like there's yeah. no, there's no excuse. Right. I did. 100%. I did. I will say that I looked up the spelling of Raltier while we were, uh, <laughs> while we were talking here, just to make sure, um, because I can never spell well, that, that right. That's fair. Yeah, I, Raltier <laughs> is definitely one of those ones for me as well. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that was just about all that we had uh, uh, planned out for tonight. Uh, I want to thank our special guests, uh, Matt and uh, Kendall, mm -hmm. for making time. Uh, if you guys haven't checked them out yet, go Please. to Bad, Break Break Day Bad Deck Breakdowns and check out their <laughs> podcast. Corin, uh, do you have a link or, or a website or something you can shout out? Uh, can yeah. So so you can find you can go to the website is kendallcast.ninja. Or you can search for uh, Kendall Cast or Bad Deck Breakdowns on Apple Podcasts, uh, or the the one that's not Stitcher, mm -hmm. or maybe it is Stitcher. I don't know. We're on most of those. Most of the most of the podcatchers that you randomly download pull from Apple Podcasts anyway. So okay. whatever your whatever your podcast grabber podcatcher awesome. of choice is, just search for yeah, Bad right. Deck Breakdowns. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I want to thank you guys for for doing that and uh being on here tonight go ahead matt yeah yeah we're, we're always looking for uh bad deck ideas and guests so if you've got a bad deck idea uh that you uh like and want to talk about shoot uh kendall or corn yeah um well, I, or myself I mean, a pm on the forums or slack uh, what we like to do is get the list and um and then he and i play a game or two against each other and then with guests, like what we did with Eric Hunter, is both of us uh, mm -hmm. played a game uh, against you know, essentially the author of the list. We then uh, record once a month, and uh, the episodes are about 30 to 45 minutes long, and mm -hmm. uh, kind of go from there. Awesome. awesome. The only requirement is you need to be able to answer the question, why is this deck bad? <laughs> nice. Uh, I like Jerry, give me, send me your WAP desk uh, list. 
<laughs> yeah, we will have to maybe do yeah. another crossover where Dan and I or or one of us get on on your guys' there we show. Go. We are certainly fond of flying bad decks, so I think we would fit there right go. in. Over there. <laughs> All right, Dan, awesome. thank you for another great show. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you for watching, and thanks to you. Yeah, uh, and then uh, speaking of which, so next week we're going to have Austin Madison out. Uh, he is the gentleman who basically runs the the San Francisco League. Uh, he does a lot of his own artwork and everything, so he's going to be on. Uh, so yeah, uh, tune in yeah. next week, same uh, Jerry time, same Jerry f- uh, channel, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern uh, and 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, and we'll see you guys next week. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Adios.